Hello, hello. Welcome to PD and your PJs. I'm Julie from Seesaw. I'm so excited to be here with you to talk about three new ideas for the camera tool. And mostly I'm just honored that you took time out of your week to join us here to talk more about how your students can use Seesaw. Like I said, my name's Julie. I'm on the teacher community team at Seesaw. I was a high school ELA teacher for 18 years. Believe it or not, I was using Seesaw every day with 11th and 12th graders. I would love it if you're on Twitter, if you could find me really quick and give me a follow. I'm at EdTechJulieJ. I share lots of resources related to Seesaw. And of course, you can connect with our whole team on Twitter at Seesaw. Now, before we get too much further into the presentation, I want to ask if you've watched the brand new to Seesaw webinars for your grade level. Just a friendly reminder, the slides that you're seeing on my screen now are coming your way in your email shortly after we conclude. And you can open these slides and click right there where it says brand new to Seesaw to open those trainings. Um, if you haven't gotten started with Seesaw and you're needing that information about how to get started, how to log in, how to set up a class, you really wanna watch those brand new to Seesaw trainings for your grade level. So I just wanted to make sure I had that available to you before we got too much farther into the presentation. I'm gonna hop in the question box quick and make sure everybody's hearing me okay yep it's looking good I'm gonna keep going and then what I want to remind you is that as we get near the end of the presentation tonight you can type things into the question box and we'll save a few minutes for questions and I'll hop in there and answer a couple of things that are on your mind Okay, so we're gonna be talking specifically about the camera tool today. We're gonna to talk about ways that your students can use that camera in Seesaw to show what they know. But before we get going um, further with those ideas, I wanted to just remind you in general, what we like to say at Seesaw is that the best posts in Seesaw, and you can think of that even as a Seesaw activity too, um, those are the ones that really integrate the things that your students are using and doing in your classroom with their hands, along with the digital like creative tools in Seesaw. So the hands-on materials that you have in your classroom or whatever your students are doing that day in class, along with the creative tools in Seesaw. And we also say that the best student posts in Seesaw encourage your students to be creative, to reflect and to collaborate. And more specifically, what I always remind teachers is that anytime your students are using the camera tool, which is what we're talking about mainly tonight, the student taking a photo and adding to Seesaw, I wanna remind you for sure that you wanna make sure that your students are always using that microphone to record, to share what they're thinking, to give a little more insight about the picture they took. Make sure they're your last step when you're posting in Seesaw. Like if you're a student, make sure you tell them your last step is always to record. So I think that's a really good reminder because if you're thinking about what's on the screen there, that you wanna make sure you're encouraging reflection, um, the best way to do that I think is using that microphone right alongside um, the camera, whatever photo your students are posting. So I wanted to remind you about that. One other quick thing, and I'm popping into a demo class here quickly, and um, I'm on a computer for this presentation, but you can picture this on a tablet, iPad, smartphone, whatever your students are using. I just wanted to remind you of a couple of things about photos before I show you my three ideas. I'm logged in as a student here. So usually when I present trainings like this, I'm logged in as a teacher, but in this case, I'm a student. So I'm just playing the role of a kiddo in your class. And I just wanna remind you how easy it is for students to take and post a photo to Seesaw. Remember, Remember when I'm a student, all I have to do is click that green add button. That's the only button I have to click. And then right away, I can open that camera in Seesaw. So this is what it looks like from my computer. Your students might be on tablets, iPads, but um, remember all they're doing is clicking that green button and then they don't have the same choices that we as teachers have when they click that green button they don't see what we see like browse the library or send an announcement they just go right to these creative tools so if your students are just getting started with seesaw i might remind you that it's really easy to get them just to post a photo right away take a picture of the classroom take a picture of their desk desk it's such an easy thing to do when they're logged in as a student it's just green add button and then they're choosing that camera. So that will work as like a first set of steps for everything that I'm showing you tonight. Okay, so here's my three ideas for you, but before I um, get to those, and those are coming up in slides, and remember you're getting the slides and you're gonna be able to click on all these links later. I do wanna remind you, and this kind of was something you might have been thinking about when I was presenting to you a second ago from that Seesaw class, 
probably it's worth it to make sure your students do know how their device works, especially if they're on Chromebooks. We get a lot of questions from teachers about how to best utilize the camera when they're using a Chromebook. And I would just definitely say that's worth um, a little bit of training on your part or a little time on your part. Make sure students know perhaps that if they're on a Chromebook, the way they take a photo is by clicking the space bar or make sure that they kind of know how their hardware works. Like in my brain, I think it's easy to picture how students would be very familiar with something like a Kindle or an iPad or an iPhone, but if they've never used a Chromebook and have never taken pictures on that, that might be worth a little bit of training. What I wanted to offer you in these slides is um, a link to a playlist of a lot of past Seesaw webinars that we've done that have been specific to Chromebooks. If you click on this image later in the slides, it's going to open this list and you can see there's five really good trainings there. And I even put a circle around a couple that I think might be really specific to hardware setup. And that might help you if you and your students are new to Chromebooks, you might take a quick peek at that. I know Trisha and Andy, the presenters and those two trainings have lots of really great solutions for how to maximize um, your hardware so that might be worth looking into do remember too that any on any device that you're on the probably the first time you or your students are trying to take a picture it's going to ask for permission to access the camera and you always want to say yes to that or allow because you have to enable that in order for it to work to take a picture okay I've talked enough, so let's go into these new great ideas that I can't wait to share with you. Maybe some of them look familiar, but what I hope to do is just encourage you to think creatively about how you could adapt some of these ideas to your own classroom, your own environment, your own curriculum. Um, what did I want? What I wanted to show you here were just the step-by-step -step instructions that you could use if you wanted to ask your students to do this. Take a picture and color on it. Take a picture and decorate it. This is a really great um, a first uh, exposure to the camera tool in Seesaw. If this is the first thing you wanted your students to do was just to take a picture and you could you could specify and tell them what you wanted them to take a picture of and then use the drawing tool to color or decorate on it. There's lots of really cool things you can do with that and I wanted to make sure you had simple step-by-step -step instructions for how that would work if you were explaining that to your students. You know as always like I said earlier I will always want you to use that microphone as like your last step there so we can hear students explain their thinking and then of course students are going to check mark to add to their journal. Let me show you a couple cool ideas you could use. Um, you could have students give themselves a costume or decorate themselves um, or even you could have them outline different things they're learning about on their own body like uh, I have seen a teacher use it before with like lungs and heart and stomach like if they've learned it on a skeleton then maybe they could practice it on themselves there's lots of ways they could take a picture just of themselves and then decorate that picture this is one of our favorite activities that we call snowy selfie maybe you saw it last winter I wanted to make sure you had the link for that activity if you want to do it through Seesaw's activity library you could get that link just by clicking on that photo when you get the slides but even if you didn't do it as part of the activity library, these are the steps your students would use, right? They would open Seesaw, tap the add button, take the photo, and then you would tell them you wanted to decorate themselves maybe as a snowman or something else. They're using that draw tool, then the microphone to explain what they did, and then check mark to add to their journal. So you could do that quite simply just from these instructions, or if you want to do it as an activity in Seesaw, the link is there when you click that. Here's another great and of seasonal right now example of decorating a picture maybe you have a pumpkin in your classroom or near your classroom in the hallway or close by or maybe you even just have a picture of a pumpkin somewhere on display in your classroom just have your students hold up their device take a picture and then decorate the pumpkin that's a really easy first activity that your students could do in Seesaw or first post they could create in Seesaw. So I hope if you're joining us tonight and you're just getting started with Seesaw, you see how easy some of these ideas would be even for our littlest learners. These would be pretty simple activities for them to do just to orient themselves to the tools in Seesaw. Here's another activity that we call divide the pie. And if you wanna look at that in the activity library, it's here, you can click on this photo later in the slides and it'll take you right to the activity link but again you could have your students practice fractions and dividing by taking a picture of anything not to imply that you would have a pie or a pizza laying around your classroom but you would maybe have something your students could photograph and then could use that drawing tool in seesaw to divide that that item whatever it is like you see the pie pictured here a great example um, of students using a real world item and then applying something like they're learning about in math so i love that activity too 
whoops, I went too fast here. Um, I included a few uh, pictures here and there in the slides, just posts that we've seen teachers share on social media. This is a great example, and we see people talking a lot about shape hunts. Maybe you've heard people talk about having uh, students go out on a playground, look for shapes, and then identify them. This is a great example of just using the camera tool in Seesaw, then using the drawing tool to trace the shapes and the, even the label tool to label that what they were looking at was squares. Um, this teacher shared it on Instagram, but this would be a Seesaw post in a student's Seesaw. So this is a simple thing your students could do too with the camera tool. They're just taking the picture and then drawing on the picture. And in this case, it's um, something directly tied to what they're learning about in your classroom. I also love this too. I saw this a while back on Twitter and I saved it because I thought it was really interesting. This is a great example of using the camera tool and then the draw tool to predict or estimate. So it looks like these students are growing um, a bean and they have a maze set up and then they're trying to see, make a prediction as to how that, that plant is going to sprout. And so that student, I mean, right now it's just in a cup in some soil, but that student predicted that this is what the bean sprout would eventually look like, maybe predicting that it would go through that construction paper maze. I thought that was really cool. And maybe you have some ideas that you can think of in your class where students could use the camera and the draw tool then to predict or estimate what something would look like. Maybe you could do that with a thermometer and they're predicting how cold or hot the temperature would be and how that thermometer would rise or lower. I think that would be interesting too. So I thought that was really cool and I wanted to make sure I shared it with you. Okay, so here's my second idea for the camera tool. And you heard me hinting at this as we started tonight. Um, I think it's really just a great and easy thing to do for students to just take pictures of whatever they're doing with their hands-on materials or manipulatives in your classroom. And remember, the instructions here are really simple. Even for our, our youngsters, all they're doing is tapping that add button, taking the photo, and then maybe they can use the draw tool like we did previously, or maybe they just tap the microphone and say what they're doing, and then they add it right to their journal. So don't forget that whatever your students are doing in your classroom can basically be photographed, explained, and shared to see. So I wanted to show you some good ideas for what I'm talking about there. Um, in where it's relevant, I've included activity links for you. So if you want to do it, through the activity library, like you could click on these pictures and it would take you to the activity link. You can see here that that's an activity called build words. But again, your students could still do that just following these simple instructions. So even if they didn't use the activity library, they could still practice using the camera tool in this way. And so here's an idea of using like the word magnets or, or um, manipulatives that your students would have hands-on and then they could take a picture. Here's an example of a photograph and this student did a video, but they're just taking a picture of whatever they made, whatever words they made at their table, and then probably adding some voice to. Taking a picture of those hands-on materials is like just such a great first photo post in Seesaw. I like this one too. These are those stackables and the student is measuring the length of their foot and their hand. This is an activity you can see in the activity library if you want to see the step-by-step -step instructions. But again, like I said, you could literally have your students follow these simple instructions and achieve the same post. They're just opening Seesaw, adding, taking the photo, explaining with the mic, and then check to add to journal. So this is a great idea. You might have these stackables in your classroom. You're doing this activity already as part of your math and then just have them take a photo of it. I like this too. If your students are doing anything at all in your classroom with Play-Doh, Catherine's example here, this activity is in the activity library. Um, she's having them create musical symbols with Play-Doh, but you're probably using Play-Doh for a variety of things. Anytime your students are using Play-Doh, make sure they're taking a picture. It's just an easy thing to photograph to add to Seesaw. And you can see that Catherine, like I would recommend, also uses that microphone as the last step in her activity too. So you can get this activity by clicking on this image in the slides. I thought that was awesome and wanted to make sure I shared it with you. I also like Will's domino activity here. Dominoes might be something like dice that you have in your classroom that your students use for various math activities, kind of as a math manipulative. If you have those kinds of things out in your classroom, that's another great thing to take a picture of. And this actually even includes a tangible whiteboard along with the dominoes. And that's an easy thing to take a photo of. You can see Will here does not have the instructions to click the microphone, but you could do that as well. Um, you could always give your students these instructions and that's, you know, they're taking the photo of their dominoes 
and tapping the mic too, even though it's not included there. Or if you opened this in the activity library, you could edit it to add that yourself. I love this activity though. I think it's a great idea. You can get the activity by clicking on this image in the slides. And this is really cool. I saw it just on social media earlier today and I thought it was perfect for tonight's um, training. So I wanted to make sure I plugged it into my slides really quickly before I met with you tonight. But this actually is a good activity about like digital citizenship and taking care of devices. And you can see that this student um, or perhaps a neighbor student, a friend student took a picture um, of the like the iPad norms and the expectations around handling the iPads and then typed in these labels. So that's pretty cool. That's a great way. Um, I thought this was a good example to include as far as taking a picture of what's going on in your classroom because it's not necessarily these math manipulatives or Play-Doh like I featured on previous slides, but this is just like literally the activity that's going on in the classroom. If they're talking about handling and care of the iPad, worth photographing. And then remember, you could always have that microphone as the last step there. This activity is in our library, thanks to Anna. And so you can click on this image later if you wanted to open it in the activity library. Here's a couple other posts that I wanted to show you. And these were shared on social by Beth McDaniel, who teaches science in high school and so I always love um, a couple of quick examples from middle school and high school too just to remind you that we have kiddos of all ages using CESA. I know this looks kind of gross when you see it on the screen but I thought it was a really cool activity. The student is um, you know they're learning about muscles and skeletal stru structure and so they're using a chicken wing to practice that and then all it is is a photograph and then that drawing tool to label the parts here so i thought that was a pretty cool idea that we could um, talk about tonight as far as the way to use the camera tool and beth also shared this on social media and this is pretty cool as well it's a physics class high school physics they um this is their hands-on experiment and then they're using the label and the drawing tools to kind of show what's going on in that experiment um, I think that's just kind of the point of like whatever's going on in the class that day, they could always use the camera. And that kind of brings me to my last point, idea number three. And this is just that, you know, not everything your students are marking on, drawing on, or labeling would have to be done on the whiteboard in Seesaw. You could just have them do it on paper and then take a picture of whatever it is that you were doing that you were working on or creating. I think it's just a good reminder, and I appreciate Miss Goodwin sharing this picture with us, that like some things you can just have your students do on paper and then take a minute to have them take a photo of it and either read it aloud or explain what they were doing so maybe it's not a worksheet or paperwork but whatever you're creating or working on like those projects that um, students do with like say construction paper or maybe they're creating some sort of project or artwork it doesn't necessarily have to be something they drew right in seesaw if they drew it on other materials just have them photograph it add it to seesaw and of course use that microphone at the end i think that's a great last step I wanted to remind you as we were wrapping up and we have plenty of time for questions. So type those in the question box if you have some things that I could clarify for you. I just wanted to remind you that we have a really robust help center. It's at help.seesaw.me. So if you have questions about anything I talked about tonight or just in, about the activity library or anything about getting started with Seesaw, don't hesitate to look there. There's, you can see where the arrows are pointing in the screenshot. There's several ways to ask for help there. You can ask a question here. This is kind of like submitting a help request. You you can search by keywords or topics here, or we even have this little Seesaw Assistant down at the bottom with a question mark, and it's pretty good at answering some questions for you too. So don't hesitate to interact with us there on the Help Center. I would love it as we wrap up tonight, and it'll be a few more minutes before this pops up on the screen, but I would love it if you could take a minute to answer the survey questions that pop up. We really do value your feedback about these trainings, and that's how we um, make our sessions better. So give us some honest feedback about what you learn and what you're hoping we can talk about in some of our future sessions. Um, I wanted to give you a reminder about where you could connect with us in our community. We're very active on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. Probably you know that we have Seesaw Teachers Facebook groups for every grade level. So you can join the big group called Seesaw Teachers, or you could look for the ones called like Seesaw Teachers Kindergarten and so on. So join us there because we have a really active community who shares a lot of ideas and tips. And that's a great way to just get even more um, Seesaw ideas. So don't forget to find me on Twitter and EdTech. Julie J, and you can catch up on our past PD there. 
any time. I think what I'll do right now, and I'm going to stay online for a few minutes. I think what I'm going to do is pause our recording and then I'll stay on to answer questions. So start typing things in the question box. I can see we still have a great crowd here. So I'm happy to help with whatever I can. I'm going to pause the recording and then I'll be back on in just a second to answer questions. <laughs> 